So, you're thinking about applying to become a firefighter with Fire and Rescue New South Wales, I think that's fantastic. I wanna give you the opportunity to beat the competition throughout the recruitment process. So in this video, I'll be taking you through what the different parts of the process are and what they're looking for at each stage. My name is Brent from Fire Recruitment Australia and you can stay up to date with everything fire service recruitment by making sure that you're subscribed, you're clicking the bell icon to make sure you get notified when we upload more content and give this video a like if you think it's helpful. So as you go through the application gateway with Fire and Rescue New South Wales, you'll be required to participate in several different psychometric tests and the process will look like this. Phase one. The first phase is a timed cognitive test. Now there are 51 questions and you'll need to complete this in 20 minutes. It'll include abstract cognitive test questions, so that's multiple choice based questions, around a group of shapes that have some common patterns or rules, encouraging you to use logic and reason. Verbal cognitive test questions, well these are multiple choice questions too, but will test your ability to process verbal information in an effective and efficient manner, as well as master the English language as a way to communicate and comprehend instructions. And numerical cognitive test questions, well these will actually do two things. So some questions will show you a series of numbers and ask you to find a pattern or a rule which explains why numbers are positioned where they are. And some will include some short written numerical test questions and ask you to perform tasks such as multiplying numbers, calculating averages, percentages, or ratios. Now I know this might sound like a lot, but we're actually gonna give you some example questions for each part of the cognitive test later in the video so you can have a go at some real life test questions and get used to the kind of questions that we'll be asking you for real preparations key so the main challenge of the cognitive test is, is the timer so the timer is set so that only two to three percent of the population can complete the test on time and have all the questions right so your job is to try and tackle the questions well and efficiently so that you can ace as many of the questions as you can so in phase one you'll also be asked to complete a work safety personality test to ensure that there are no safety issues which might hinder your performance as a firefighter. So we don't time you for this part of the test. It's a personality test of around 30 questions and it measures risks in your work safe behavior which might impact your ability to be a firefighter. So we actually measure this using five scales. Scale one is risk avoidance. Scale two is safety and personal accountability and responsibility. Scale three is managing stress and emotional resilience. Scale four, aggressive or violent behavior. And scale five is compliance and obedience. Phase two. So once you pass phase one, you'll move on to phase two. So in this part of the application gateway, you'll be asked to complete an emotional intelligence test to ensure that you are able to manage your own emotions and predict others' emotional response too. So we call this the Emotify. It's an emotional intelligence test, which is completed in two parts of 55 forced choice questions. So the two parts of the test measure your emotional reasoning in two different ways. All right, so part one, it asks you to identify emotions based on facial expressions, and part two asks you to identify emotions based on behavior. For example, we might ask you to look at this facial expression and ask you to identify the emotion that the person is feeling. All right, let's look at some example questions for the different parts of phase one in the application gateway. Remember, this timed cognitive test requires you to answer three different kinds of questions. Those are abstract cognitive questions, verbal cognitive questions, and numerical test questions. So, as one of the abstract cognitive questions, we might show you something like this. So these questions are forced choice, which means that there is only one correct answer. Your task, therefore, is to quickly identify patterns and logical rules for the group of shapes and then use them to select the answer that fits in this space. So to answer this question, we need to find which patterns can be identified from left to right. So we have an outer square containing one of three shapes, a circle, square, or a triangle, and a number of lines across the corners of the square. So there are two things going on here. Firstly, the three inner shapes always repeat in the same order, circle, square, triangle. Secondly, there is a pattern going on with the lines in the corners of the square. So this pattern is more complicated and to find a solution, we need to actually count the lines. So given that the missing shape is in the middle, we best to start from the shapes after the missing shape. All right, so in the first shape, which is left to the missing shape, we have two lines across the top left corner and one line across the other corners. In the next shape, there is no change in the lines. And in the next shape, we see a drop of one line from the top left corner. Then in the following shape, we see another line drops, this time from the bottom left corner. 
in the next shape, there is no change in the number of lines. So this means that the pattern is one line drops from the first shape, then in the next shape another line drops, then there is a pause in the next shape, and then the pattern repeats. Therefore, shape D is the correct answer. The verbal cognitive questions take a slightly different shape. So these are multiple choice test questions designed to measure your verbal reasoning skills. So there are different kinds of verbal cognitive questions that you might see. For instance, there are some questions that comprise of a list of statements like this one. So in questions like this, you'll be presented with a list of statements or facts. You will then be asked if one or more of the statements prove or disprove the conclusion that is stated in the question. So for this particular question, you would need to find two statements that together prove that Tim has a red car. So statement A says that Jill likes Tim's car color. And if we combine this with the statement D that says that Jill likes only red cars, then that can prove that Tim's car must be red. So some verbal cognitive questions comprise of a list of words or an odd one out question like this particular one. So in questions like this, you'll be asked to select one or two in the list that are dissimilar to the others. So basically to find the odd one out. So most words in this list have a common theme, to acquit, to exculpate, to exonerate, and to vindicate, which are all verbs that relate to being found or declared not guilty or free from blame. However, to esteem means to respect and admire and has a different meaning to the rest. So this is the odd one out. Other verbal cognitive questions are about word association like this one. So in this type of question, you are given two words that are associated in some way, right? an analogy and a list of options. So your task is to select which of the options is most like the given word association. So in this question, the association between cane and walk is that the cane is an ancillary instrument to assist someone to walk. So therefore, we need to find a word in the list with a similar association to eyeglasses. So eyeglasses are an ancillary instrument to help someone observe. So this forms the same relationship that exists between cane and walk. The numerical reasoning questions are the third type of questions that you'll come across in this phase of the application gateway. And you might see a question that looks like this. So here, the test question includes a list of consecutive numbers. And your task is to identify the pattern and logical rules for this set of numbers. And based on the patterns that you identified, you can correctly select the missing number. So to answer this question, we need to identify the pattern in this number series, or a rule that explains what all numbers are positioned where they are. In this case, we would start analyzing the numbers to the right of the missing number, as this offers us much more numbers to actually work with, okay? So first we look at the three following numbers, 48, two, and 24. Can we see a rule here? Yes, 24 times two is 48. So let's check if this rule applies to the other numbers, 24, 4, and 6. Yes, it does, as 6 times 4 is 24. So if we apply this pattern or rule, then 48 times what is 144? Therefore, the missing number is 144 divided by 48, and that equals 3. Or you might see a numerical cognitive question that looks like this. So this kind of numerical test question includes short written numerical test questions. And these require you to use your skills in mathematics to correctly solve the problem. So to answer this question, we need to first identify the connection between the figures given in the question. So in this case, the connection is time multiplied by speed equals distance. So before we plug in the numbers, we first need to change the given time of 30 minutes to hours so we can get the speed in kilometers per hour. So to convert minutes to hours, we needed to, to divide minutes by 60. So 30 minutes divided by 60 equals half an hour, right? So then we can plug the numbers to the formula. So time times speed equals distance. So half the speed equals 200 kilometers. So then speed is 200 kilometers per half hour. And that would mean that 400 kilometers per hour. So you can find loads of resources online to help you ensure that you're ready for your tests with New South Wales Fire and Rescue. So our professional preparation resources include a really large pool of timed practice cognitive tests online, including questions around abstract reasoning, verbal reasoning, and numerical reasoning that are all tailored to New South Wales Fire and Rescue. So the questions are based on real test questions, and the timer mimics the pressure of taking the real test. All right, so you can find step-by-step -step solutions at the end of each test as well, and you can see your test scores in comparison to others 
And we'll also give you lots of feedback on how you can improve, which is essential. Uh, we also provide personal tutoring for your cognitive test, your work safety test, and your emotional intelligence test. And this is all delivered by experienced psychometric test trainers. So you can choose to access the training face-to-face -face or online, and uh, we'll work with you to ensure that you can demonstrate your potential, full potential and capabilities in fire and rescues, cognitive, work safety, and emotional intelligence tests. So that's a breakdown of some of the key information that will help you present your full potential as you go through the entire application gateway. We really hope that this has helped and really excited to get to know you better as you go through the whole process. Uh, you can find all of the ways to connect with us or get in touch below and we'll see you back here really soon for another video. Cheers guys.